the Liberty Flames. And good old Hugh Freeze, 8-5 and five last year. Post-game win expectancy had a record of 6.89 and 5.11. Uh, they were 7-5 and five in the regular season. So the post-game win expectancy was about right where it's supposed to be. Um, you you look at this bunch. They lost Malik Willis, of course, the quarterback. They lost uh, the running back, Joshua Mack. They lost wide receiver, Kevin Shea. On defense, they lost defensive mm-hmm. tackle, Elijah James. Uh, Deron Hall. Um, and sorry, Deron Lowe. Uh, let's see, who else? I mean, they, they just they lost a bunch last year. They're number 117 in the country in returning production. And, and the roster strength is not as good as it was last year. Uh, now, a big part of that might be some of these studs that they're losing. But, man, when you look at this team, like, I, I know that you don't have the numbers in front of you. I want to know what your guess is on what their, what their rank was in turnover margin last year. Uh, I, would, I would guess bad, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. They were number 125 out of 130 FBS teams in turnover margin. They were, I mean, as bad as you could possibly get. Um, I, I put on here on offense, could a new quarterback limit the turnover issues? Uh, it says, talk about a new look offense. There may not be a player in America that could replicate what Malik Willis did for Hugh Freeze's offense. Uh, and then I put in here, transfers could make the offensive line solid. Young wide receiver core could be dynamite if quarterback Charlie Brewer, or whoever uh, the new guy is, uh, can hit him. Charlie Brewer's there. I don't know that he's going to be the starter. Uh, and they do have like a three-headed running back monster. They, they've got... Three guys that can all play, that could all start. Uh, so we'll see what, which one ends up doing all right. Defense, uh, number 110 in returning production, like 51%. They don't bring a lot of guys back, but they do have major pieces at defensive end and linebacker, along with a pretty good secondary. Uh, secondary was number 26 in passing success rate allowed last year. Um, they were not good at stopping the run, but that can improve with some of the incoming transfers that they got. Uh, you know, guys to look out for uh, the defensive ends here, Johnson and Clark. Uh, the wide receiver, Demario Douglas, could be good as long as he's got somebody that can get him the ball. Uh, you got to stop the turnovers. They were number 116 in interceptions thrown last year. Uh, the offensive and defensive efficiency numbers showed that this team should have been way better than 7-5 and five last year. Like, they just... I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. But at the same time, I don't know that that necessarily means anything for this year because... You can't replace Malik Willis. Like you got to develop these young guys and whatnot, and and the quarterback is the most important position in Hugh Freeze's offense. And I don't know what he's got there. Like Charlie Brewer has experience, but you know Salter or Bennett could be better options. So we'll we'll see about those. Like I, I've got them, I've got them seven and five, and man, that might be solely based on on my faith in Hugh Freeze being a pretty good head coach. Okay. So this is weird. We seem to have this team the exact same record. I've got them 7-5 and as well. But I feel differently about it. Like, everything you just said sounded negative and pessimistic. And all I can think of is, A, there's there's very few coaches in the country that I would trust over Hugh Freeze to replace a great quarterback with another great quarterback. He's obviously proven that he has a track record of being able to coach quarterbacks up pretty damn well. So um, that doesn't concern me. Uh, You know, is Malik, you know, is he going to find another Malik? No, you don't just replace the greatest quarterback in school history. But at the same time, it's not like the guy coming in is going to be a bag of potato chips. Like, Q's going to get him coached up. He's going to run this offense. He knows what he wants out of his team. And I think he can get him there. I think they're seven and five strictly because they – they do turn the ball over a lot. I don't know that that's all on Malik. I think that is just the kind of the way they play football, uh, a little fast and loose. Um, and uh, and so those things happen. And then also, Hughes never been one to have a great defense. And so while he can score with folks, if he plays anybody that can score or they can slow his offense down, he's going to struggle to win those games. So I think the teams that they're outmatched against, I think they struggle to beat. I think they get beat up pretty good. But the teams that they're better than, I think they also beat those teams up pretty good. Yeah, I, you know, I tend I to agree with you. To say that this team is very, uh, like their final record is usually pretty close to also how they are against the spread. I would bet that teams are favored to beat; they cover the spread. And teams they're they're underdogs against, I bet they don't cover the spread. Well, I will, I will say this: they went eight and five last year. They were seven and six against the spread last year. 
So, at, close. At, yeah, yeah. I pretty, think they beat the teams they're supposed to beat, and the teams are not supposed to beat. I think they beat the hell out of. Them. Yeah, the so. majority of them. I mean, remember, this team lost to like Louisiana Monroe last year. Like it, it was. That's right. No, I know yeah. that that was unexpected. But, but, you know, it's not a perfect science, but I'm just saying. I think, I think what the thing, I get from Hugh Freeze teams. The thing that, that drives me nuts about last year is they were – this team was number 15 in predicted points added uh, margin last year, and they were number 18 in net points per drive, which typically would make you like a top 20 football team. Like you, you should be – especially with the – uh, schedule that they played, they should have been better than seven and five in the regular season. And you know, I looking back at at what they were, like maybe maybe the idea is, you know, I don't know that all of the interceptions were Malik Willis's fault, but number one sixteen in interceptions thrown is definitely not good, right? Uh, if you cannot turn the football over, like I trust you, Freeze, to have a good offense. So. You know, again, seven and five, like, and that's with BYU, Arkansas, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, UAB, like, yeah, uh, all these guys on the schedule. Like, I, there's, by the way, there is a big discrepancy between like <laughs> the good teams against the bad teams that they play. Like, it is a vast difference. There, there are very few average football teams that Liberty's going to play <laughs> next year. Uh, Virginia that, Tech might be, but the that's closest. what I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like. <laughs> Like they're they're gonna play teams that I think when they face them, they have no not only do they have no chance at winning unless a miracle happens, they're gonna get destroyed. Yeah. And 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 the other teams that they play, I think they're gonna beat by third. Yeah. Because I think those other teams are gonna struggle to score five. I mean like it's just Akron, hard, UMass hard to put point. Yes. Yeah, Gardner Webb, Yukon, New Mexico State, UConn, like they <laughs> New Mexico State. Yeah. Those teams those teams are going to struggle to score on anybody all year. Yeah. Any points at all. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.